Welcome to the CrewCast, the Cruise Live podcast about video games and all things crew. Join us and many of your favorite crew members as we review games, talk about the new crew series, answer your questions, and much more. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode of the CrewCast. Hey guys, welcome to the Crewcast, episode 24 for the 16th of the 11th, 2013. Today we have myself, Gizmo, Belboz, Piper, and Danny, and we're going straight to the main news. All right, our first story is touching on a previous story from yesterday, or from last episode, and adding to it. So, you guys remember the dude who got the Xbox One early, put up some videos unboxing it, which were, or I think a video or two, and just talking about it on on Reddit. It was pretty good press, honestly. The video was horrible quality, because he he was holding his camera while he was unboxing, so it was like just horrible footage. Um, But Microsoft had it taken down. And his Xbox Live account was banned until the uh, a re- actual release of the console. Now, Giz was very upset. This was Giz had mentioned that when he read this story, it had him enraged. Uh, on the flip side, Microsoft did uh, apologize to the guy. They re- uh, released their DMCA claims on his videos, so his videos went back up online. And Major Nelson from Microsoft was in contact with him, he talked to him on the phone, and was going to try to get him... I don't know if they were going to fly him out or if he's close to one of the Xbox One release events, which the guy was really excited about. So it was a happy ending, all in all. Now, what was kind of funny of this, and this is my pick on Giz part of the episode. Giz, you know, has been pretty anti-Xbox, anti-Microsoft. Um, and he was very laughed a lot when I told him that Sony said that if anyone gets a Sony early, a PS4, they won't do takedowns. And Gizmo mm-hmm. laughed. But what did Sony do? They did the exact same thing. A guy got a PS4 early, put up a video of the user interface, linked it on Reddit. I clicked on the link, and what come up? This video has been removed by request of Sony. You know, corporate name, blah, blah, blah. Uh, So they did the exact same thing. And this was even funnier, because all it was was showing the user interface. But for a company who said they wouldn't do it, they did. Now, my thoughts on this is it's not necessarily a knock against Microsoft or Sony. I think these companies are so big that they have corporate entities that deal just in legal stuff, and they were probably working uh, kind of on their own doing things, and they probably never contacted like the, the heads of the Xbox groups or higher-ups. They just did what they normally would do. Uh, whereas if the Xbox guys or the PS4 guys really were asked about it, they'd probably be like, leave it alone, don't do that. Um, but your guys' thoughts on, on all of this kind of, cause it kind of groups together, uh, and gives any change in attitude about all this. Well, it's still really stupid for them to take down the videos or like ban the guys or whatever, but, yeah. Are you enraged? Well, are you, are you enraged with Sony? Cause Sony did the exact same thing after saying they wouldn't. Well, sort of. I just don't understand why people just can't make videos. Well, I mean, I, I understand one part. From Microsoft and Sony's standpoint, if a t- console is not officially released yet, um, maybe the user interface is changing when it comes to the Sony. Uh, and when the Xbox, you know, they're only allowing employees and, and select press at that time to be online testing things because things are still evolving. And you don't want press um, to show things that are, like, not finished or you know, are in progress, because it could make you look bad. So I kind of understand that. I think Microsoft saying, hey, look, we're going to disable your, your live account until the product is actually released. I think that's decent. They definitely made a mistake with the videos. They released the vi- or the hold on it, um, and they invited the guy bring it to bring the guy to a, a console event. So I think they did good there. Now, the Reddit thing, I don't think it ever really got traction, just because I think it's, it's easier to hate on Microsoft than it is Sony in general, um, but it was just some guy on Reddit 
who posted a link, and I don't think it really caught. But I just thought it was very humorous that when I clicked the link, that it was gone already, and it was removed by Sony. And it was pretty innocent. That all it was was the guy showing the startup like animation and the opening user interface. Uh, I mean, it's just it's stupid in general. But I don't think you can fault Microsoft any more than you can fault Sony. They both do the same things. And, you know, whatever console people like, they're going to like. And they're, if they like them both, they'll like them both. If they like one and hate the other, they're going to be predisposed to hate the other. So, But I think both consoles are going to be great. And, uh, you know, long live new consoles and PC gaming. <laughs> All right. Nintendo. Next up. Oh. Speaking of the PS4, it officially ships, and actually is shipping as this airs. It went uh, officially uh, out the door on Friday. This podcast airs on Saturday, and we are recording on Thursday, so they haven't shipped yet for us. But what's kind of interesting is uh, Taco Bell here in the States had a thing where if you bought like special value meals, you got codes, and if you tried to redeem them, some of these codes could win you a PS4. And I think they gave out over about 4,000. And people got them on Wednesday. So two days early, people started getting their PlayStation 4s. Well, there's been reports on Reddit already of bricked units coming out the door. Uh, in fact, last night, I watched for about a half hour a guy live streaming, trying to get his working with everybody on Twitch. There's like 5,000 people on the Twitch channel of this guy who only has... I think he had like 100 followers at that. Now he's got like thousands. Um, <laughs> it was, there was somebody from Twitch trying to help him. And he spent 10 hours supposedly streaming, hoping to stream the PS4 that he, that he won from Taco Bell uh, and never could get it working. Has to send it back to Sony. Sony was sending him a box prepaid that would could send it back, but it was going to probably take a week or two to get a console. So cool. the guy was all excited about getting a console two days early to be able to game and stream and, and be part of the, the next gen early. And he's probably going to have to wait. And people who are going to just be able to buy it in the next two weeks who didn't pre-order, who just go to stores are going to beat him to the punch. But, oh, that sucks. You know, there have been, I'd say at least five or six people on Reddit who got the Taco Bell units who have reported failures. Um, and a few of the gaming uh, websites have reported uh, bricked units that, Sony has fixed for them. And they're much quicker to fix them if it's a magazine or a online review site that's popular. If they have a bad one, they're going to basically take care of them very quickly. Uh, but what are you guys' thoughts on this PS4 already being, you know, 4,000, 5,000 units being shipped out and five or six people already claiming, uh, uh, you know, bricked units? It's not it good press. Yeah, it doesn't sound uh, good. Unless it's just a really, really bad. bad you would have thought, so, like, such yeah. a big, like, you know, obviously that's against the Xbox One. It's all the hype about it. You would have thought they'd make sure that it worked. Well, it makes you wonder as well. I think people have to take this with a grain of salt, too. It's new hardware. No matter what you get, there's always a chance that it's not going to work. There's always a percentage of devices that are bricked. I mean, be it an iPhone, an Android phone. I mean, I've bought a TV before, got it home, and it didn't work, and I took it back. When you buy something on day one, you might have trouble. So if somebody goes to Walmart, buys a PS4, gets it home, and it's bricked, they're probably not going to be able to go back to Walmart and exchange it because everything they have is already allotted to go to customers who pre-ordered. So you're probably screwed, um, which sucks. Normally, if it's just a normal product, they probably have extras, and you can switch them out. But, I mean, there is a percentage of everything that's built that fails. Is this a bad sign? I don't think it, I think it's too soon to say. I think tomorrow or tonight at midnight when people go to the midnight launches to buy their units or get their pre-orders, we'll start seeing if it really is a major issue. I mean, let's not forget the 360 had a horrible, horrible start. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people had consoles failing, the Red Ring of Death. I mean, it was, it was bad. Um... But it's hard to say right now because you just don't know. Uh, and I think the Xbox One fans got to bite their tongue right now instead of going, ha-ha, because in a week, their units start shipping. And uh -huh. there's going to there's gonna be some percentage that fail. 
it's always going to be a case. You hope it's like, you know, some 0.01% of units or some, you know, tiny minuscule number. Uh, but first gen, you know, this, this console is just, it's just first generation, you know, of it. They're going to make changes to it. They'll refine it. I mean, look at the Xbox 360 and then look at the Xbox Slim. You know, the, the same thing with the PS3. The first PS3 was a big, big old uh, thing. And then they came out with the Slim versions. Uh, you know, things change and evolve and they make them better quality. And it's one of the risks of being an early buyer, but not a great start for Sony, especially when it comes to Reddit. Uh, but basically what people are saying is it looks like they think it's actually a problem with the HDMI uh, output because these do not have anything except an HDMI port. Same as the Xbox One. There is no, there is no component. It's HDMI out only. And uh, this guy couldn't get any picture output from it. The PlayStation kind of has a, a light that flashes, that pulses, and it's supposed to pulse white but it was pulsing blue. And that means that there's something wrong. It won't even go into safe mode. So you're going to start hearing the pulsing light of death plod or something. <laughs> so oh a horrible, horrible start. But uh, yeah. I will say tomorrow, Friday, I should have one arriving. We'll see Ooh. what happens. <gasps> Lizzie wants to do help me do the unboxing video. And we'll hook it up and we'll see <laughs> if we have as bad a luck or if we have great luck. Um, you know, I'm, I'm excited is... about all of the technology that they're all using, but we'll see how it goes. This Go means come Friday, we're not going to see you for like ages. Um, <laughs> we'll be doing our live stream probably right when I get it. So I probably won't even be able to touch it until uh... later. <laughs> you know, there's a chance maybe if I get it sooner and get it hooked up, maybe like part of the live stream. At the very end, we'll fire it up and try to like live stream because it supports Twitch. Um, you know, maybe try streaming something right off the bat from it. That would be cool. But you know, we might wait and do something on like Saturday or whatever just to show it. But uh, we'll see. I mean, I like I said, I think this is common. There's some failures, and and most people don't go online to say how happy they are. They go online to complain. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the very internet. true. All right, next story. Finally, the Humble Bundle guys have created a storefront. Before, Ooh. you could buy games, besides the, the, the bundles and uh, the weekly things, they did sell titles um, for all these different companies. Like FTL, you could always buy it through the Humble store, but they never had a storefront. Now they do. Link in the description of this video. Danny is going to let us know what some of the higher end titles that they have on there. There's a whole bunch of stuff, but some maybe some of the better ones. Okay, so there's Amnesia the Dark Descent, which is a pretty popular game. Uh Psychonauts is on there. Which is I think it's on sale on there as well at the moment. Uh Prison Architect, Rogue Legacy, Don't Starve, Chivalry, Orcs Must Die Two, Dungeon Defenders, Alan Wake, The New Batman is on there. Uh System Shock 2, Psychonauts, Lego Lord of the Rings, Lego Lord of the Rings, Scribble Knots Unmasked, <laughs> which is the uh, DC comic uh, Scribble Knots game. There's and a lot of should, games on I that. think it should be noted too, I think the new Batman on there is actually like, here in the States, $10 cheaper than the, the full version that you would buy on Steam. I think it's like fifty nine ninety nine on Steam and I think it's forty nine ninety nine on uh, Humble. Yep, that's right. So I mean, that's a real good deal on a on a on a brand new title. I mean, immediately saving you know ten bucks. Very good. So I, I think it's great that they're actually having a storefront now. Hopefully, they'll increase like how you can navigate through it and make it easier to to browse genres and 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 really move towards like something like you would see if you're using Steam even through the web interface. I mean, because your Steam client is just a browser the storefront and stuff that you do through the client. It's no different than really going through the website itself in your browser or GOG or, you know, any of those fronts, Origin, but have a, a much easier to navigate setup. But, I mean, this is a great start. Uh, and I don't know if, like, all of their sales still have a percentage that go to charity, even through the store. 
I don't know if it says anything about that. It says that the top 10% of proceeds go to charity, and if that is says $93,000 has gone to charity already. Yeah, wow. so, I mean, I mean, I think that's great. And I, th- I just, you know, if there's a game that you want and Humble Bundle has it, more than likely it's going to be cheaper, plus you're helping charity. So uh, you can't beat that. And I think they support credit cards. They support Amazon payments. Uh, they used to support Google Wallet, but I think they've stopped using that. Um, not pause. I think they support PayPal. I, mean, I know they do. And they might even support Bitcoin still. It's just not listed, which Bitcoin's a whole different topic that we don't want to get into. So very cool. All right, so let's continue on here with crew news. So uh, enough people have whined about wanting to be able to sign up for the mole. So I went ahead, because I did stop it before the two months had ended. So I went ahead, and I'm going to leave it going for the two months plus about an extra week or so. So all the way through November, you can still sign up for the mole. And I will say that Mario Piper and myself, we were going to kind of be handling the uh, interviews and, and the building of stuff and all that. Um, we're going to have our hands, uh, like uh, our, our work cut out for us, basically, because there are so many applications. <laughs> Look. It's, it's going to be a, a very difficult process to try to even choose people to interview. So you still have another 15, 16 days or so to uh, finish but basically november 31st if there's is there 31 days in november or is it 30 30 yeah so after the 30th midnight which be, becomes december 1st signups will be officially closed get those applications in guys all right so our next topic is about our theme servers and piper you're going to talk a little bit about that yep um the theme build server is going really well um We've had loads of people on. I've been on quite a lot and I've been talking to loads of people and seeing their builds and everything. Um, this week's theme that we've just done um, was famous people. Um, we had quite a lot of famous people. We had quite a lot of characters as well, which weren't exactly famous people, but um, go with that. Um, lots of YouTubers were built. Um, lots of Miley Cyrus. Do I dare mention that? <laughs> um so, <laughs> um, at the moment of recording this, we've not actually filmed it, but um, we've been all the crew have been looking and we've been seeing which ones we want to feature because there, there's been loads of really, really, really good ones. Um, the next theme, the one that's currently on as of Saturday, um, is sci-fi. So we hope that you will log on to our server and build a build that's related to sci-fi and if your build is wonderful we will show it in the video which will be up at the weekend next weekend yeah i really wanted to kind of push for a kind of spacey alien type build there for this week because it's the doctor who 50th anniversary on 23rd november um and it means a lot to me so i know what i'm going to build yeah this is one for gizmo really so there you have it science fiction sci-fi try to keep your builds in that genre and that realm the better you follow the theme and build something amazing the better your chance of of your video or your build being shown in piper's video yeah all righty our main segment now this one i just kind of threw out there because it's it's something i think all of us deal with in different fashions and it's always interesting to hear but what current technology frustrates you to no end, but you can't live without it? <laughs> um, the internet? Hello? I, I mean, go use it. Like, I mean, us at least, not like every single human being, because some don't. Um, but we will use it. And <laughs> the amount of times, I mean, even during this recording at the start of this, we had people like disconnect or whatever and it was like hello hello like we get real yeah, that's so frustrating trouble. but this technology is just so so crazy and so weird like we're talking to a guy in america and i'm talking to <laughs> you two who are like danny's like all the way over there and piper's all the way over there and like it's so weird okay any uh <laughs> anyone agree with that one or have a different one um, I, I agree, agree with that one because I've had internet trouble because I need to get better internet. I know Bob, Bob was, but um, yeah, 
you just can't live without it and it's like phone as well like I never realized I needed the internet on my phone until because I had like until last year just a normal mobile phone or cell phone as you guys say and you know it's fine and it had no internet and blah 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 and then I thought oh yeah I've got to upgrade I've got to get a smartphone you know so I bit the bullet got one and it's like actually I can't live without having my phone connected to the internet and but yeah, I don't know if that's a good thing. Have you guys seen that video on YouTube where they yeah, where I have. they, they talk about like being addicted to your phone and like people are so busy trying to record with their phone that they miss what's actually going on and stuff like that. So I that's a problem, but I can't live without. So you're still focusing on the internet or the internet on your phone? Um, the internet in general. So whether it's on the phone or whether it's on the um computer. Okay, Danny, were you internet also, or um, I'm like kind of both. But another one would be my phone, my actual phone, because when I got back from America and I got all the way back up to the area that I live in, it was seven o'clock at night and my phone was dead, and I <laughs> I couldn't <laughs> yeah. call for anyone to like pick me up or get help oh, to get home. I didn't know that. Yeah, so I had to pay for a taxi to get home. No, I didn't <laughs> yeah. know that. Um, so that would probably be one, like the battery in my phone would be a thing that I couldn't live without, but it annoys me because it dies constantly. Okay. Well, for me, it's a little bit different than you guys. I love the internet, and I don't have that many problems with the internet. And um, it might just be the, uh, you know, here our internet is, at least where I live, not necessarily America, but just in this area, our internet's very, very reliable. I rarely have any issues with mine uh, i'm lucky I, if i have one or two times a year where my provider goes down i'd be surprised um internet's very resilient to like outages i mean sometimes we'll have mumble go down or the servers disconnect uh, or be flaky uh, and that's usually because somewhere on the internet some construction workers cut a cut a fiber optic line mm -hmm. or some uh weather has happened or whatever or something's being worked on or a router dies but it usually recovers on its own. Um, I'm going to say cell phones, but for a totally different reason than you guys. With me, it's more like I love, you know, my cell phone. And I love being able to use whatever with it. Being able to make a phone call, get my email, send a message. But here in the States, there's two things I hate about cell phones. One, our country is so big that there are spots where maybe you don't get any coverage. Or maybe you only get uh, 3G, no 4G. Or maybe even the 3G is spotty, you know, depending on some of these areas. When you start, like, taking a trip or driving, you go across these uh, long uh, areas where there's just no coverage or it's very spotty. I hate that. And I also hate how much they charge for the phones and how they lock you into two-year contracts and everything they do. I mean, I hate the cell phone industry. I think it's a ripoff. I mean, they charge you for text messages unless you buy, like, unlimited text messages. And text messages literally cost them nothing. It's it's such an immaterial little service that they shouldn't have to charge uh, anything. It should just be included in your base plans. Uh, and some countries may not have that. Uh, but here, it's like I said, it's spotty coverage depending where you're at. And then, of course, just the the fees and the contracts. I just think it's a it's a complete mess. But I, you know, I won't get rid of my cell phone or, or anything mm -hmm. else because, you know, it's so key to me. So, deals of the week. Another deal that's we talked about, I think, uh, previously we mentioned it, uh, but it's still going on and more stuff has been added. And it ends, I think, in about two or three days from this podcast. It's the Humble w WB, so the Warner Brothers Games Bundle. So right now it's got Batman Arkham Asylum, Game of the Year, Fear, Fear 2 Project Origin, Fear 3, Lord of the Rings War in the North, Scribble Knots Unlimited, Batman Arkham City, Game of the Year, Mortal Kombat Arcade was added, Guardians of Middle Earth DLC, Lord of the Rings Online, Steely Dawn Starter Pack, Gotham City Imposters, The Professional Kit, The Millennium Skins Pack for Batman o Arkham Origins, all of those things, basically, at least around a $5 bid, will get you all those games. 
I did not know about this. <laughs> so they've added, I think about four of those things were added from the previous one. Uh, but, I mean, you cannot beat that deal. That is, that is a great deal. I, I'm getting this. I've been waiting to get Batman, like, cheap. and like, All of those just... games are really good as well. Yeah. Lizzie absolutely loves Scribblenauts. I need to play Scribblenauts. It looks really fun. So, I mean, that's a great bundle, and I really encourage anyone out there that is looking for some games, uh, get them. Proceeds go to, some of the proceeds go to charity. Obviously, you name your price, but you have to at least put in, I think, $4.62, so let's just say $5, to get all of the stuff. And the site shows that, that value fluctuates depending on how, how much people are bidding. But this is a great, great deal. All right, our last deal. This one's in honor of Rocket, the guy who's working on DayZ. He's a huge fan of this game. I, myself, have not played it. Um, one of our builds for one of our theme builds actually built the character from this game. But right now on Steam, you can get Kerbal Space for 40% off. And that brings it to about $16 US. That's another good game as well. I've played that. It's really good. I've got it, but I've not managed to play it yet. So, I mean, a great, great game. Um, Rocket loves it. Hopefully, Rocket, you're not playing it, and all these other games that you've been talking about, you're working on DayZ. Daisy <laughs> in space. If not, Gizmo is going to come, and he's going to hurt you. I am patient. I am patient. Gizmo is patient. Patient. patient zero. You heard it. It will, it will come. Right, Rocket? Right, Rocket? <gasps> right, Rocket! Supposedly, we're, <laughs> rumor was we we're going to get it this week by people predicting. I think it's going to come out before December first. That's the only thing I'm going to say. Ooh. Yeah, I'm, I've I've given up predicting. I just it'll come. It'll come. It'll come. All right, our last segment: your questions. And we have lots of questions. I'm only going to do three today, but I have other ones. But please keep sending in your questions. Form in the description of this video. A link to it. Fill it out, put your questions in. If you want to do it as a video or an audio question, put the video on YouTube, make it unlisted. Put the sound file, if it's just an audio question, on something like uh, Dropbox or SoundCloud. Put a link to your video or to your sound file, and we'll use it in the podcast. Today's questions are all uh, just typed questions on the forum. But our first one is from Watermelon. Watermelon! Do your classmates slash co-workers know you're in the crew and what is their opinion of the crew and the crew's videos um, so start it with giz it sounds like well um some like of my youth group people know that i do like today i was they were playing minecraft and i was like oh we play minecraft i do a youtube thing on that and they're like oh yeah i've seen it i've seen some of your videos um so some people like know that i do stuff but like they don't really watch anything. Um, I think my family kind of somewhat know. Like I was talking to my grandma today and kind of saying, "Oh, I do, I do YouTube videos." Ooh, because um, she was asking about like the Minecon thing. Um, so they kind of know, but they don't really fully really understand it. Okay. What about you, Danny? Um, my friends know, like a few of my friends and. I think some of them do videos, but I don't know. But um, yeah, they they uh they understand and they are uh, supportive of like the videos and stuff. They're really interested. Okay, Piper. Um, I'm quite private, so I have told any of my coworkers and family have only recently just found out and completely embarrassed me because my dad's like. I went over last Sunday and he's like, oh, I've got this new Evo app thing on my phone. And if I find a YouTube video like this one and I just fling it across to the TV. So imagine this massive TV in my parents' living room and our videos start playing our IRL videos. That's what happened to me last weekend. So I was like, oh, yeah, you found them. Um, I think my sister might have something to do with that. I'm not too sure. Like, um, at work, um, I think, well, obviously, Desil knows. And um, one other lady knows because her son plays Minecraft, so I've been talking to her quite a bit. And, I mean, I get lots of abuse from my housemate from being, I'm using inverted commas here, geeky. 
Um, she's hey. like, oh, you're doing your geek stuff upstairs and that kind geeks. of thing. I know, I know, but that's the abuse I get. So I do try to keep it like somewhat private, and I quite like having that privacy as well. So, How much of it is, yeah. is wanting in the privacy versus embarrassment? Um, it depends. I mean, if it's like my work, then I prefer to be private. Like, I don't want them like on my face even, that kind of thing. But embarrassment with my parents and my housemate because they will take the mickey out of me. Okay. Well, um, I'll say for Lizzie first, I'll kind of speak for her since she's not here. Uh, obviously, her, most of her friends know she does videos. And because um, most of them like Minecraft in some fashion, be it if it's on iPads, iPhones, Androids, tablets, or phones, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, same thing with like Paige and Ryan. Uh, it's kind of funny is um, some of Ryan's friends know that we do videos and watch our videos. And P P uh, Ryan's mom has told me that like when they come over, they'll say, Bell Boss lives next door. <laughs> so... <laughs> This is kind of funny, but you know they're they're they're, they're first graders, so Aww. um it's but they watch it you know mainly because they know that Paige and Lizzie and Ryan you know and Ryan's been in very very few things, but so they they have people who know now as for me, uh, I make no bones about it. My whole thing is if you can't um, tell people what you do, then uh, you know I shouldn't be embarrassed about it. So uh, people in the neighborhood know. Um, uh, people I work with know, um, friends of mine know, you know, most of them aren't necessarily Minecraft gamers, so most of them don't watch what we do. A few do. Uh, some of their kids might, more than anything. Uh, but I mean, most of the people I know, uh, the old, you know, fa our families who have parents in their 30s or, or even higher, most of them aren't gamers. So they think it's cool. I think it's amazing, you know, how we have so many fans and all that. Um, but, I mean, they know what I do. I don't try to cover that up. I mean, I obviously do other things. And we'll talk about the, one of our other questions that will lead into some other parts of our lives here in a second. Uh, but, you know, I pretty much I think everybody who knows me knows what I do. Be it my real job or this kind of fun thing we do. Okay. Now, leading into that, our next question comes from Sparkles228. If you have a job, what is it, and what do you work as? Now, you may or may not want to answer these questions. You don't have to. I think this is a great question because it really hits two things. Um, obviously, what some of us do for a living. Uh, people like Lizzie, obviously too young. Or Lizzie are too young. They don't have jobs, per se. But it also touches on how strong or not strong, I guess I should say, the job market is. Because most of the crew, I think, are all still looking for work. I think Piper and I are really the only two that actually have, you know, actual paying jobs. I know Extra had one for a while, and Comma did, and it, I think it was more part-time work. Um, but I think pretty much most of the rest of the crew are looking for work. But Piper, I mean, I don't know what you want to say about this question. Um, well, I personally want to keep my job private. Like I just said, I I like having the two separate lives, like my work life and my home life. So I keep them private. I mean, I get asked a lot of times if I'm a librarian. I am not a librarian. <laughs> I'm not a librarian. You're such a librarian. <laughs> I could dress up like one, you know, hair in a bun and glasses cool. and pencil skirt, but... Okay. That's all I want to say. <laughs> uh, well, as for me, um, I, you know, I'm a software engineer. That's what I went to college for, uh, what I had done. And I worked for probably 10 years, 12 years at one company. And then I kind of went out doing consulting on my own uh, and do that. So software guy by day, make videos and play games at night. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> the paying gig is uh, the software engineering thing. So, um, I know Common Extra aren't here. Like I said, they I think they had some part-time work. I think they're both actively working pretty hard to try to find stuff. And Danny, yeah, I think are. you're, um, do you want to talk about it all? What you kind of were, I think you're like taking some training. I don't know if you want to mention that or whatever. Yeah, sure. Um, 
I'm currently doing a course in forklift truck driving, so I will be able to um, drive forklift trucks and stuff and take pallets of whatever item to another place and drop it and then go back and get some more. That's what I'm doing. But I, uh, by, tr by, by trade, I'm a joiner. That's what I trained to do when I left school. So explain what that is, because that phrase doesn't make a lot of sense here to Americans. Um, a joiner is a person that will, like, in a house you've got door frames, so I would cut the door frames, fit the door frames, hang a door, I'd, like, cut the door to size, hang the door in. Um, other stuff, like roof trusses, I would fix roof trusses to a, a, a house. Um Pretty much everything in a house that is wood, a joiner would either make or fit to the house. Okay. That kind of here, I don't know if they would call it more like a, uh, possibly like a carpenter or working in just the house housing, you know, uh, trade. Oh, my official title is a carpenter slash joiner. So. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Joiner didn't, didn't make a lot of sense. You've mentioned it before, but I wanted you to kind of explain it. Uh, but I think this is telling right now with the economy all over the world. Uh, you know, here in America, jobs are tough uh, for people. Uh, and it, it's the same way in the UK, and it's the same way in Germany, where it comes from. Um, I, I don't know, like, about, like, Swippen, you know, how things are in uh, Sweden. I, uh, Swippen, I think, is a database programmer, uh, kind of like what Wolf was, uh, I believe. He can always post a comment in this uh, video and be more uh, specific and say, Boz, you are wrong. I am this. Um, but, I mean, it's tough right now for people. Um, but I think, like I said, I think that's pretty much right now what uh, kind of people do for a living. Uh, Giz, I mean, are, are you, have you got any like future goals on what you want to do? Well, I mean, I would consider my youth group as a, a type of job of sorts. I mean, it's volunteer, um, but I've been doing it for so many years. Um, so I basically, I, I help run like a, a youth group thing um, and we do kind of drama based games and sometimes we'll put on performances and actual shows. So like we'll do like proper actual rehearsal periods where we're putting on amateur shows, but it's it's a show. So you've got the costumes, you've got someone doing the lights, you've got someone doing backstage. Um, I tend to either be involved in it or help backstage, like chaperoning and stuff. Um, and I've done that for like ever since I was little and it kind of just evolved into me kind of taking on a, a more of a leadership role of sorts. Now, but that's like volunteer work, right? That's not like something that like, if you were to say, this is what you want to do for a living that you could actually, actually do. I mean, is there a, a career in that? I mean, what would it be? Or, or is it something you're going to try to do? I think that would be more of like a drama teacher thing, but I don't want to be a drama teacher. Like in school, that would be terrible because you always hear about like kids talking about the drama uh, teachers in school it's like i hate my drama teacher in school so i mean you know if you were to like take a guess i'm gonna put you on the spot because danny's got his uh carpentry and forklift where do you think maybe 10 years from now what you would see yourself doing and when it comes to <laughs> no. like you know the, a paying gig no don't you see yourself working I don't like looking into the future. I don't know what we. I don't even know if like the world will still be here in ten years' time. I think that's a safe bet. It probably will be, unless uh, Lizzie does something <laughs> with TNT. You know, with Lizzie and Fire. But you never know. I mean, Danny, you think ten years from now you'll be uh, forklift driving, or you think maybe getting in more into the carpentry? Um. I'm hoping to at least, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hope to use the uh, forklifting to get money to, then pay for like tools and stuff, and then hopefully get a job in carpentry, some at some stage. I would bet you guys are probably similar here, where for a while the housing market here was just crazy. The houses were popping up, people were buying houses left and right, and then the housing market kind of like died. Uh, it's starting to make a comeback here in the states. But a lot of people involved in housing um, lost their jobs because they just weren't building as many houses as they were before. Um, that happened right as I went into my training. Oh. So when I came out of my training, I had nowhere to go, pretty much. 
So Piper, putting you on the spot 10 years from now, same thing you're doing now? Um, I don't know. Just, um, my job at the moment isn't certain. I think, well, I think people consider about their jobs anyway, but um, I don't know whether my job, the, the place that I work will still be there in 10 years' time. I actually doubt it will. Um, I don't know. I mean, my dream is to like own my own house. That would be my dream, and I need my. I'm saving lots of money at the moment to to dream, but I just I don't know what the future will bring. Um, if I have yet another job, I have another job. Um, I don't want to be a teacher because I live with a teacher, so I know what that's like. <laughs> but um, I mean, anything really. Um, I might retrain something else I don't know we'll see what the future holds but I mean at the moment I love my job and I don't want it to end and I hope that it will be it's difficult saying stuff without actually saying what I do I hope that my job will be there in the future if it's not exactly the same as it is now it will develop into something else with technology and stuff but it's really hard not to <laughs> to you're say not, it you're but... not a drug lord don't worry <laughs> She's it's actually yeah. it's actually funny though. Um, I actually wanted to be a zookeeper like ever since I was younger. Like that was my goal. Like uh, so, I did a year in animal care, and then I realised that I don't handle like mess and like poop very well, and that kind of comes with the job. So I was like, no. <laughs> well, it'll be interesting. Maybe a year from now, you know, next uh, holiday season or whatever. To maybe revisit this topic and see if things have changed. You know, is Danny driving a forklift? Is Piper still an astronaut? Is Gizmo <laughs> cleaning up poop? You know, what's the deal? Okay, and now kind of touching partly on what we've talked about. I, I had all these questions because I think they all kind of intertwine. But we have a question from Lultastic108. Why does it take you so long to upload videos on channels like I Has Cupquake? She uploads about maybe two videos a day. Now this one makes me <laughs> makes me sigh <laughs> from one spot and then kind of chuckle on another. Yeah. Because we put a video up every day. We've done a video every day for almost the beginning. Yeah. So to say how much more do you want? <laughs> to say I has Cupquake does maybe two videos a day. Maybe she does, but. Part of the reason people like I Ask Cupquake or maybe the Cast, or Captain Sparkles or whatever can put up two, three videos a day if they do. Not all of them do. It's because they have millions of subscribers. They're doing it for a living. They have, you know, a large amount of money coming in and they have like a lot of that money spent to pay other people to help them or to buy equipment for all those people. But when you're a channel of our size, you do not have that luxury. Uh, we're not uh, making a full-fledged living from this. I mean, we're not. We're not. If we had a million plus subs, then things would change. So, sub up if you haven't, and maybe we'll <laughs> get there. And and maybe we will put two or three videos out a day at that point. But I mean, like this week, I've been putting out a lot of videos because I've been throwing out our normal yeah. content plus stuff from Minecon, um, and I have more stuff like that. And we try to do one plus uh, video, you know, maybe a, instead of seven a week, there might be eight, nine, ten a week. I mean, that's our goal, but you just understand we're not as large as those channels. To expect the same things from us, from them, is tough. Maybe we'll get to that point someday. I mean, I hope that maybe we'll, at a minimum we hit, you know, 100,000 to a quarter of a million subs, and I'd be happy. I think that would be awesome. Will we hit a million or plus? I don't know. But what are your guys' thoughts? I mean, it, I could do a day in the life of Piper if you want. It's like, you get up, go to work, that's my day, and then I come back, and then I've got to cook, and then obviously I want some downtime, and sometimes I edit a video, and then 9pm comes in the evening, and we're recording. That's pretty much my day every day. And I barely have time to do other things, and I physically can't like put like edit all these videos so we have more than one a, one a week you know we all pitch in with videos and stuff which is brilliant otherwise i don't think we'd be able to do a video a day 
it's just, I mean, loads of comments on sisters, and it wears me out, really, just reading them. It's like, well, oh, can't you do more sisters? It's like, no, <laughs> I really can't. I struggle getting one out a week, and, you know, I mean, as much as I love doing it, and I would love to do it, you know, all the time, I just literally can't at the moment, because I need to eat and live and pay rent, and so I have to work. <laughs> Daddy gears any thoughts? Um well obviously it takes time for it like Piper does sisters, it takes time for her to edit the video, then upload the video through Dropbox. So it's gonna take a lot of time in that sense to get a video just to buzz so you can upload the video. Like with Giz he does Skyblock and he does Portal. That that takes time for him to edit and then send the files to Buzz. It's it just wouldn't be a feasible option at the moment, I don't think. To do I think more than at least two. I think as a channel, we put out a lot of content. Yeah, we do. I think some people um, have trouble when it comes to, like, they don't subscribe, they just go to the channel, and they have trouble seeing new stuff. I mean, I don't know how many times I've seen people say, why isn't this out? Or why isn't that out? And it's been out. Or, or they just miss stuff. And they have trouble searching for things and finding things. Uh, but I mean, we put out a video a day, so if you subscribe to our channel, you should be getting notifications. Even if you don't, if you go to youtube.com slash hill software, you can hit the videos link and just look through our history of videos. We have a ton of videos. We put out a video a day minimum. This week, there's been so many videos, and I'm still not done. I mean, you're going to see, or maybe have already seen, some footage about a crew member who surprised a couple of the UK crew members at the uh, bus station <laughs> um, or airport or whatever it was. Um, there's going to be some other footage. There's going to be some stuff, still some sprinkles of Minecon stuff. Uh, we're going to be doing more reviews. Uh, I want, I mean, I, I know I want to do more reviews. I know some of the crew don't like reviews, so it may not be all of us, but I want to review stuff. We're going to do some unboxing of the PS4, of the Xbox One. Um, I'm going to try to get some game companies to send us hardware that we can review and then give away. So, I mean, we want to do more stuff, but just remember, it's tough. You know, Piper talks about what she has to go through to then have the time to do videos. With me, I have, you know, the fact that I have to get normal work done during the day, and then I can shift over to recording and editing. But I also have a wife. I have a kid. I have a, a kid in college. Uh, so to juggle being a parent, being a husband, having a full-time job, and making videos is tough. If we were two, three million subscribers, you know, a huge channel, I'd quit my day job. I'd quit it in a heartbeat to do this. Because, I mean, who wouldn't, you know, unless you're not much of a gamer, who wouldn't want to be able to say, I can sit around and make videos and play games and, and make money? I mean, I'd be like, pinch me. Because I must be dreaming. <laughs> and there's a lot of people doing it. I mean, like I said, that boogie guy, I mean, uh, he is hilarious, his character he plays. And I kudos to him for, for getting to where he is and being able to be flown to Sony press events. Um, pretty much everything you see us play, review, we have actually paid for either as individuals or maybe the channel here. Maybe I bought some stuff and then gave games out. But generally, we're buying it in some fashion. We're not given... I mean, we every once in a while, some people give us a few games. There's, I think, a game that Giz and Extra have that they have to do a playthrough maybe of recording and a, and a review. Uh, there's also a game that Giz and I have that he was supposed to stream and maybe record something on, but he hasn't done it. Oh, peep that Papers, Please thing. Mm-hmm. Got it oh, I've got that, I think. Or I've got it on my wish list. So I, really I, mean, I got two copies of Papers, Please from, from the guy a while back, and Giz and I have it, and he was going to maybe stream it, and then the two of us were going to maybe review it. Um, I forget the name of the game that you and Extra have, because it's a strategy game. But we've had a few things given to us. Uh, we don't go out asking for it, generally. Sometimes people just volunteer it. Kind of like when we were at Minecon, we talked to, I think it was the, the pig game, wasn't it? Pig Eat Ball. Didn't he yeah, say, like, I think he said, send me a... Story as well. I think he said, well, I think the pig guy said, email me and I'll send you a couple copies. 
I don't know if anyone else had volunteered that. But we don't ask for it. Um, but I'd love to get, like, a lot of uh, companies like Razer and Astro are very big about, you know, giving hardware to channels or t streamers to have them talk about it, review it, and then be able to then give it away to the fans. So we might do stuff like that in the future. But, I mean, we try to do more than just be what we are, but it's tough with how much stuff, you know, especially for me because I kind of have to be the center point to get the stuff and put it up and, and manage it. And I just, you know, I can't dedicate my full time to it because I, you know, have to do other things. Real life gets in the way, doesn't it, Buzz? Yeah, I mean, you might see, I mean, guys like, you know, their other crew are starting to put some stuff up more on their channels. And you'll see on our, if you go to youtube.com slash the hill software, you can see all the crew's individual channels, plus our crew after dark channel. But you can subscribe to any of those. And I think Extra and Comma have been putting up some LOL tournament stuff, which is not something that is, I'm not a big strategy game fan, so you're not going to really see LOL content on our main channel. Um, or even probably the After Dark channel. But if you like that kind of stuff, you can subscribe to their channels, see the footage. I don't know if Danny or Giz have any plans to try to put some stuff on their channels. I did at some point try to upload um, a playthrough of Batman Arkham Origins, but that fell through. I'm probably going to start doing more videos on my channel as well. So there's always a chance, you know, you'll see some of this other content on some of their channels, and you know, if Danny uh, gets crazy and puts up tons of content, you know, <laughs> he may shoot up, be up there in the million, two million subscribers, and then he gets the forklift job and he has to make a decision. Yeah. <laughs> Drive a forklift or play video games for a living? I think I know which one you'd pick if, if you felt you could make a living with it. Oh, that's a tough decision. You could put a laptop on the forklift so you could play games like driving games while you drive the forklift. Oh, that, that'd that mess with my head. That would be very unsafe, and you know, insert some of those videos of the forklift drivers hitting sh uh, shelving and like the whole warehouse collapse. Klaus, Klaus, does this Klaus? Uh, no, <laughs> Piper sent me that oh. video. <laughs> sent me as well. <laughs> Scared me. We've seen bit. it, Buzz. I've seen some videos of people wrecking in forklifts and, and things. <laughs> I don't know if I've seen that particular one, but I've seen quite a few of them. So I mean. We put out a lot of content. We'll try to continue to put out a lot of content. Um, we put out one a day, I think, is great, because a lot of channels, even big channels, don't do that. So I think we're doing pretty good. We're trying to do more stuff. We're trying to do new things. Some cases get back to some of the old things that were popular, too. We're trying to find the right mix. We're always open to hear people's thoughts on stuff they'd like to see. You know, Do you want reviews, hardware reviews, software, games, reviews? Do you want giveaways? You know, what kind of stuff do you guys want? Tell us, and Gizmo will make it happen. <laughs> All right, well, with that, I think it's time to end episode 24 of the Crewcast. So if you guys want to say goodbye, we will head out. Bye! Bye. Oh! <laughs> <laughs>